Good morning, dear brothers and sisters of Christ. It's great to be back with you again for our weekly chat. Hoping that this past week has been a blessed one for you and your loved ones, that you're all doing well, you're staying safe, and of course, you're taking the time to be family in everyday life. So this morning, I'd like to take a look at a tremendous challenge that all of us as Christians face, but especially we as Orthodox Christians, in trying to live out our faith in today's world, in today's society, which has become more and more unchristian. So stay tuned. As always in our podcast, if you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the section below. And I'll do my best to, to, to get back to you. So let's start with our prayer to the Holy Spirit. O oh, Heavenly King, the Comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere and fearless all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life. Come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. So, let me start with some reflections on an article called Society, Classless and Godless, written by Father James Mina of Blessed Memory years ago. But it's really relevant uh, to what uh, society is, is experiencing today here in America, but also from a Christian pers- pers- perspective, um, the challenges that, are, that we face now in today's world. He starts like this. Let's recount some thoughts which throughout history have torn at the unity of human thinking. He mentions different things back in history. If there is a God, then who is he and what is he? Does God really care about his creation? Has God intervened in history? Was Jesus born of a virgin? Did he remain ever virgin? Was Jesus human or was he divine in nature and in will? Are there saints? Can saints actually pray for us? Is there purgatory? What about indulgences? Is the Pope the vicar of Christ? Are we saved by grace, by works or faith or by nothing at all? And then he goes on to say, of course, this list is infinitely longer than this. And and he said in in a very prophetic way, and as we move down through the years, many more questions will be asked of of, of this type of nature in terms of society. But the point of emphasis that Father Mino is trying to make is that at every point in society, we enter into a new moral conundrum, if you will. There are new controversies that come up. Things that, that should be taken in the context of the theological arena, but never are. In other words, the Christian perspective is, is totally removed from any discussion. Um, one of the things that Father Mina mentions, of course, is the one that uh, is ancient and yet very contemporary, always in the, kind of like in the background of, of, of discussions about where society is or where it's going. And that's the, a, the, the issue of abortion on demand. And he, he kind of looks at the concept of the question of ensoulment, or in other words, when does a human conception become human life? When does fetus take on a soul? The arguments range throughout the nation and throughout the world. There's a lot of bluster and, and, and sound and fury heard throughout the land, especially in America. The advocates of liberal abortion insist that they can define when human life begins and when that conception falls under the direct jurisdiction of the fetus bearer. Those of us who consider ourselves fully under the conviction of God, whether we are Christian, Jew, or Muslim, or any other, are convinced that we have no jurisdiction over that which has become conceived except 
perhaps in extreme cases where choices are limited to one evil over another. Those of us who believe in the sanctity of life, who are being branded as pro-lifers, shall never be convinced by those who trespass into areas in which they have no real expertise. Judges, people of medicine, unwilling mothers, and even those who call themselves believing people, but who betray all the injunctions and statutes of scriptures and their liberal, liberal bent that everything else obtains. Father Mina goes on to say, God creates life. God alone has jurisdictions over life, and any time man intervenes to take a life, no matter the cause, he transgresses against God, who shows us how to support each other in living, but not how to encourage each other in dying. How far removed is abortion from euthanasia, which is the elimination of the terminally ill and hopelessly deformed? How far is euthanasia from genocide, the elimination of the aged who have outlived the youth usefulness? How far removed are these from infant infanticide, the selective elimination of the problems before they become problems? Father Mina goes on to say, For 200 years, we've been trying to establish and maintain, insofar as possible, a classless society in America. We struggle to overcome our historic failures so that, they, so that the dream may become a reality, a society where every person is truly equal. He goes on to say, in his opinion, legal abortion is now being practiced in this nation, and that's the first giant step toward, toward an elitist society in which certain elements will eventually usurp sufficient power to determine who shall live and who shall die. Now stop for a second. I realize this is really controversial. But look at how far this nation has gone that was really built on Judeo-Christian concepts through the Founding Fathers. And, and look at what has happened in, in our country. I'm of the generation that we grew up with prayer in school. We grew up with scriptures being read in school. We grew up with saying the Pledge of Allegiance in school. Uh, we also grew up with a, a time for reflection and silence for those people who were not Christian. And we did that every morning. Um, of course, that's gone. That no longer takes place. Uh, the separation of, of church and state that was a, a fundamental tenet of, of the Founding Fathers has also been called into question. Um, I know just through the, the, the whole um, time of, of, of the COVID pandemic, uh, I heard from different brothers across the country that their local civil authorities were trying to uh, infringe upon their rights a, as a church, uh, when and how to hold their church services. Um, how to go about uh, implementing mask policies. Um, again, as Christians, we can either take a very passive approach and do nothing and allow the civil authorities to, to call the shots, or we can do as, as best we can to try to implement through our Christian filter something that will not jeopardize what we're doing as, as a church through the faith, but also not put us into jeopardy with the local civil authorities and, and their rules and regulations. And that's a fine line. And, and I know you all understand that and get that. The problem is, and now I'm speaking specifically about our Orthodox Christian faith, there's a disturbing trend, if you will, that's been happening uh, across our country, not just in the Orthodox faith, but in, in other Christian faiths. Um, a decline in church attendance. 
even before COVID, uh, the, the number of people actually coming and sitting in, in the pews, so to speak, was, was, was dramatically uh, being reduced. Uh, the number of people that were asserting their rights to, be, to call themselves Christians while not attending church was increasing. Falling on that belief that you know, they can have a personal belief in God and Jesus Christ, their Savior, and not have to attend church and be a part of a community. Those numbers were increasing. What happens as, as we look at what's going on in society is that if we as, as Orthodox Christians do not stand up and, 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 and really let our voices be heard when things are done that are not a part of the church, a part of the teaching of the, of the faith, then I think we run, into, we run into serious problems. And let me give you an example. And I realize I'm going to really step on some people's toes, but uh, there was a little blurb on, on social media uh, beginning of the week where the, the, the mayor of a large city in, in, in the States uh, pro- pro- proclaimed that Monday, June 28th, was was Vidovdan Day in this city. Um, and, and many, many Serbians rejoiced in the fact that, that, that this mayor had done so and, and, and you know, how wonderful and, and you know, this is great. And I, think, I thought to myself, hmm, and here's why, why I thought that. We've all grown up, those of us who are Serbian, have all grown up with our Vidovdan celebrations, um, lamb roast, picnics, celebrations, whatever. Um, all the while realizing, at least we should realize, that the Vidovdan celebration always fell in the midst of the Peter and Paul fast. It always has. Peter and Paul fast goes from the week after Pentecost to July 12th, the feast day of Saints Peter and Paul on the, on the, the old calendar. There would be hundreds, if not in bigger cities, thousands of Serbs attending the Vidovdan celebrations. But then on the feast day of Vidovdan, the churches are almost empty. I could never make sense of that. If this, the, the, the crowning feast of, of the Serbian church as a peoples, as an ethos, as a nation, why is it that we can't get those people to come to church? Again, my, my context of reference, of course, is here in America. Why is it that, you know, why transfer the feast from the actual feast day to a, a Saturday or Sunday? so that people can, can come and celebrate. The feast is the feast. If it's truly important to us, we should be there. We should celebrate. My own simple, humble opinion, but I think that's one issue that, that kind of buys into this decline in, in, in importance of the church in our, in our American society. Another aspect of it. Um, too many times, when you get into discussions with people about um, what they believe and, and and what affects them, and you know, you'll hear them throw out things like cancel culture and woke culture and all that stuff that's going on in, in, in our, our our society today, um, it makes me wonder what is it about the faith that they don't like that they're going to buy into this 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 other these other aspects of society. Uh, we know, for example, cancel culture is that that modern form of ostracism in which someone is thrust out of social or professional circles, right? Be it online or social media or in person because of a belief that they hold. Um, in all that discussion, if you listen to people online, whatever, you never hear anything about 
Where's the Christian perspective in this? And I think as Orthodox Christians, we've kind of followed along in that trap. You know, we, we kind of separate our faith from getting involved in these kind of discussions. And I think that's symbolic of a, of a deeper problem that we're suffering through here in America. Um, again, in my humble opinion, we have allowed society to dictate to us what is acceptable in terms of practicing our faith and what is not. How do we change that? I think that it first starts in our hearts. We personally have to make adjustments in, in our spiritual lives. We personally have to strengthen our, our, our own religious compasses, if you will. Um, we need to have a strong prayer role. We need to utilize our opportunities to, to come to church, to, to receive the Holy Eucharist, to practice Holy Confession, thereby strengthening our, 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 our that religious compass so that we know, we're not just guessing, but we know what God is calling us to be and how to act and what to do. How do we do that? Very simply, it starts with reflection, prayer, fasting, holy confession, and holy communion. But then build on that, you know, build on that. Um, one of the, the, the greatest commandments that our Lord gives us is, you know, we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. But also, we should love the, our neighbor as ourselves. As Orthodox Christians, we have to see in the people around us, not just in our communities, but in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces. Brothers and sisters, we have to. There's no getting around that. What does that mean? That means... All of this stuff that goes on in society about trying to push people away and ostracize people, whatever. As Orthodox Christians, we cannot buy into that. We should not buy into that. Liberal and conservative are man-made labels. They're not a part of the church. In God's eyes, everyone is created in his image and his likeness. As Orthodox Christians, through that strong prayer rule, through that strong religious moral, you know, uh, religious compass in our hearts, we need to be able to, to see that as a reality, not as some far-fetched fantasy, but as a reality. This person is created in God's image. How can I reach out to this person? But even more importantly, as Orthodox Christians, how can I share my faith, so that this person realizes what is available to him or her. And I, I think the disturbing trend is that far too many of us who, who practice our, our Christian faith at this level don't go down into the heart of the, of, of the matter and really work hard to, to try to transform society. A little bit at a time, obviously but it starts with us. Then from us to our communities, then from our communities to our neighbors, then from our neighbors to, you get it. And I think we really need to do that. I, I really do. Um, the last thought I have um, is that on Sunday, we'll celebrate July 4th, Independence Day. A wonderful day in the history of our country. And I know in many churches, they will sing God Bless America and Star Spangled Banner and My Country, Tis of Thee and all those wonderful patriotic songs. But I want us to think about this on Sunday. What can we do to really ask God to bless us so that we wake up, that we address the things that are wrong in our society? 
I, I mentioned it at the outset. You know, we've taken prayer and religion out of schools. We don't have to have religion, but we do have to have prayer. You know, prayer is the heart of everything. Um, what can we do to change that? Um, when we say, God bless America, I wonder what God thinks when he sees what goes on in America. I think we have to be aware of that as Orthodox Christians. So this Sunday, when we do ask God to bless us, let's make sure that we're asking for the right reason. And that reason has to be that we want to be his followers. We want to be his disciples, his apostles. Or as we just celebrate this past Sunday, Sunday of All Saints, we want to become one of his saints. A person who is steeped in holiness because he lives that life of Christ. Okay. That's all I have for today. Those are my thoughts. Forgive me for sort of like going off on my own, but I, I think it's really important at this time of the year that we kind of take notice of this and, and, and do our best to, to improve. Um, I also hope this motivates us to take a look at how we are called to answer the challenges in today's society, especially when we face beliefs and tenets that go against the very heart of our Orthodox faith. That we somehow learn to choose what is right by our faith and not by the standards of society. So let me close with our prayer to the Most Holy Mother of God. Steadfast protections of Christians, constant advocate before the Creator, do not despise the cry of us sinners, but in your goodness come speedy to help all who call upon you in faith. Patient to hear our petition and to intercede for us, O Theotokos, for you always protect those who honor you. My dear viewers, thank you so much for being with us, for taking the time. Know that we love you. Know that we lift you all up in prayer. We ask that you pray for us as well. Because in lifting each other up in prayer, we are truly united in Christ. God bless.